A quadratic function is an equation with an exponent with maximum degree 2. For example, y equals 3x squared minus 2x plus 7. That's a quadratic function. What is not a quadratic function is, for example, y equals negative 2x cubed plus 5x squared minus x plus 7. Now this is because it has an exponent with degree greater than 2. So it has to be, has to contain a 2 and nothing greater than 2. The most basic quadratic function is y equal to x squared. To graph this function, first thing you could do is write out a table like this, x, y. So for x, let's do negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And for y, so negative 2 squared is 4, negative 1 squared is 1, 0 squared is 0, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4. So what you might have noticed is quadratic functions are symmetric, meaning these two are equal, these two are equal. And same with negative 3, x would be 9, and 3 plus 3 would be 9. And if we drew this graph, now that we have some data points, it would look something like this. Draw a couple grid lines. So a vertex is at 0, 0. Then we've got 1, 1, 2, 4, and 3, 9, 4, 16, so, and so on. And then it would go on infinitely upwards and to the left and to the right. And there are two ways you can write a quadratic function. First one is in standard form. This is the most common one. It's y equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. And then vertex form, which is what is easier to work with. So this one's y minus k equal to ax minus h squared. And we can analyze the function easier this way. And some things to note, if we increase k, the parabola, so another name for this u-shape kind of thing is a parabola. So increasing k increases, so it moves the function upwards in the y direction, and then moving k, decreasing k moves the parabola down. Increasing h moves the parabola to the right, and decreasing h uh, moves it to the left. Then a is the scaling factor. So if we increase a, this makes the parabola skinnier. Decreasing a makes it more wide. And then lastly, if a is positive. It's the standard parabola opening upwards. If a is negative, it opens downwards like that. To convert between forms, let's have an example. So you have y plus 1 equal to 2x minus 1 squared. To convert this to standard form, we would use FOIL. So first, outer, inner, last. So to make it easier, we can write x minus 1, x minus 1. And then 
we can start foiling. So first, x times x is x squared. Outer is minus x. Inner is minus x. Outer is plus 1. So we get y plus 1, 2 x squared minus 2x plus 1. And then we got y plus 1 equals 2x squared minus 4x plus 2. And then lastly, y equals 2x squared minus 4x plus 1. To convert it back to vertex form, we can use something called completing the square. To do this, first step is to move the constant width on the side of y. 2x squared minus 4x. Next, you want to take out a constant. You want to factor out a coefficient from the x squared term. Here it is 2. x squared minus 2x. And now we want to complete equation like we do here. So we're missing the c term. To get this term, what we want to do is divide this second term by 2. So negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. And then we square it, which is negative 1 squared is 1. So we have plus 1 here. And since we added 1 here, we have to add it to the other side. But there's also a 2 in front here. We have to multiply 2 by 1, which is 2, and then add it to this side. So we get y plus 1 is equal to 2x squared minus 2x plus 1. Then last thing, we want to factor this polynomial or quadratic. To do this, we're going to put x minus this second term divided by 2. So it's minus 2 divided by 2 is 1, and then squared. Now that we have it in this form, we can analyze this quadratic. We can start with the domain. And this is which x values is the function allowed to be, basically. So it can be any real number. This is because if we look at this graph up here, it can be any x value infinitely to the left and infinitely to the right. The range, however, is only, in this case, greater than or equal to 0. It can't be negative. In our case right now, we don't know the range at the moment because we have to find the vertex first. So the third property is opens. So which way does the parabola open? So we look at the a value, which is 2. And that's positive. So we know it opens upwards. Next is the vertex. And this is going to be this value right here. h is negative 1. And we take the opposite of that, which is 1. That's the x value. And then k is plus 1, so we take the opposite, minus 1. That's our vertex, 1 minus 1. And this minus 1 is the minimum value of the function. So we're going to say y is greater than or equal to minus 1. And it's greater than or equal to because it opens upwards. Next is the x-intercept, y-intercept, and the min max value. So we just saw the min value is negative 1. Is the vertex y um, coordinate. So the x-intercept, we can find this by making y equal to 0, and plugging it into this um, equation right here. So we got 0 plus 1 is equal to 2x minus 1 squared. 1 is equal to 2x minus 1 squared. Divided by 2, 1 half is equal to 
x minus 1 squared, then square root is square root of 1 half. We have to add this plus or minus term because if something's squared, for example, negative 2 and plus 2 squared is both 4, so we need this plus or minus here, x minus 1. Lastly, x is equal to 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 half. That's our x intercept. So we have two x intercepts, right? And just an aside, if we have two x intercepts, um, that means that the parabola is below the x-axis and goes up, or is above the x-axis and goes down. If there's one x-intercept, that means the parabola is touching the x-axis, like this. If there's zero x-intercepts, that means it's above or below the x-axis. And then for the y-intercept, we want to make x equal to 0. So we got y plus 1 is equal to 2, 0 minus 1 squared. Minus 1 squared is 1, so this becomes 2. And y is equal to 1. So the y-intercept is 1. And then now we can draw this graph. So let's make some space. Okay, and then we can draw this graph. Okay, so our vertex is 1, negative 1. Y-intercept is 1. X-intercept is somewhere in between here. And we know it's symmetrical, so at 1, it's 1, 2. Then if we plug in negative 1 into this equation right here, we get y plus 1 is equal to 2 negative 2 squared, which is y plus 1 is equal to 8, y is equal to 7. So we know this is going to be up here and symmetric, so it's also 7 at x equal to 3. So our graph will roughly look like that. And then to convert from the graph to an equation, we only need two points, the vertex and one other point. For example, if the vertex is negative 5, negative 9, and we have the point negative 3, this point has to be on the graph, of course, then we know the equation is of the form y plus 9 equal to a a x plus 5 squared. And I got this because of the standard equation we have, which is y minus, again, y minus k equals ax minus h squared. And remember, the vertex is opposite. So when we have minus 5, this is plus 5. Minus 9, this is plus 9. And then we can plug in this point right here into this equation for x and y to solve for a. So we have negative 1 plus 9 is equal to a negative 3 plus 5 squared. 
this is equal to eight is equal to a two squared, which is eight equal to four a. So a is equal to two. Therefore, the equation, final equation, would be y plus 9 is equal to 2x plus 5 squared.